This is Twit. Benchmark is well known for its super high quality DACs, digital to analog converters, uh, which are used all over the world in, in professional settings. Um, I've used them. A lot of people I know have used them. They're just fantastic. They're the <laughs> they're the benchmark. Uh, yeah. The company na it made its name very well because they are, in fact, the benchmark for DAX. And I believe this is their first power amplifier. Is that correct? I think it's the first commercially available one. I think they may have made something for professional use maybe mm. ten years ago. Uh, but but the attraction, the reason we got together, um, quite apart from fact, my colleague uh, uh, at. DHX uh, lives quite close to uh, Benchmark's factory, which is in Syracuse. Um, we we spoke to them, and it seemed like it was a good fit. They knew a lot about DAX, and they could, they were absolutely fanatical about making their equipment work as perfectly as they could. And we we uh, toyed with the idea of of sharing our technology with them, so that they could make an amplifier that would. Get the best out of their uh, out of their uh, their DAC. When when we came up with the name Acromatic, what we meant was that whatever came out of the DAC, the amplifier wasn't going to be in the way. It would simply make it louder. It wouldn't add mm. any audible noise or, or any audible distortion. That was uh, that was the plan. Yeah, and so it seems to have succeeded. You have actually you have the the amp <laughs> there. We can we can uh, turn a camera onto it and take a look at the actual product. It's pretty small. It's, it's what half half rack space, half rack width. This this uh, across here is exactly half half rack width. So that's uh, um, half of the uh, uh, 17 inches between the between the spaces and the heat sinks on there are maybe an inch and a quarter of size. But it's mm -hmm. it's not really heavy either. I mean I haven't tried this, but you can you can definitely lift it up extremely easily. And yeah, I, I hear it. I, I read a spec somewhere that it was only like 12 and a half pounds. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, it's very it is very small and very light. It you can switch it on and um, you can leave it on for hours, and it barely gets. You you know it's not exactly at room temperature, but maybe it's seven or eight degrees higher. It's extremely it runs extremely cool, yeah. and and it will deliver a hundred watts into eight, uh, two hundred into well one eighty into into four. And it'll give a maximum output as a as a mono block of about 340 40 watts or something like that. A 380, I read in one well, review. It, it, we we when we when we do the specs on these things, we a lot of people increase the power output capability of their amplifier by going up the distortion curve. This this amp will stay uh, within a fraction of its one watt uh, output distortion, right up to within. Under one dB of full output, so so it, it hard the distortion barely changes with level. Furthermore, it barely changes with the load either. You can work in eight or four. Typically, amplifiers ha ex exhibit much higher distortion in four hours. This one is is barely barely changes. Mm, mm. Well, it's it's really remarkable um, that that it can be bridged. It has a switch on the back to bridge to mono, so you can use it as a mono block uh, or or use it as a stereo amp, two-channel amp, and um, I believe you said it will drive all the way down to two ohm loads. Is that correct? The uh, the peak current capability of the amplifier is uh, 18, uh, 18 amps. So so you have the the rail. It will be mm, uh, forty into uh, eight ohms. It may drop a little bit into into four ohms. So eight, eighteen amps peak is is typically uh, what it will do. Um, you can burst it, and it will it will give more than that. But then the distortion will go up, so you're really running it uh, too hard. Um, mm -hmm. We designed it so that it would work with audiophile speakers, which are notorious for having impedances that vary all over the all over the shop. They're often quite low uh, low impedances, so we wanted to make sure that this wouldn't misbehave into any of those loads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Magpie in the chat room is saying the main move for power amps is to displace the heavy, expensive power hot transformer with a switching mode power supply, less heat, far wider range of input voltage. Exactly what you were saying yep. before. Yes, it all uh, makes perfectly good sense. Yeah. Lawn Dog asks, uh, is, is, is this an amplifier that can work with the RCA pre-out jacks on, on, say, an AV receiver or a pre-pro? And this is another interesting thing about this particular amp is its inputs. 
Yes, well, it, it, the inputs on this are, are, are XLRs, and you can you can put RCAs in through adapters. But the other thing on the back panel, can we? Uh, if I turn it around, then we maybe you can zoom in on this. Yep, there you go. So you see the panel there. You'll see we've got a couple of switches on the back there. One of them allows you to adjust the input, uh, the input gain of the, of the system, so that you can you can match it with either studio equipment or you can match it with the uh, l much lower output that comes out of the player and so forth. Um, so ah, right, of course, because you, see uh, the sensitive, you can see the thing that it's in uh, it's in uh, volts or or dbu you can see that so you can mm -hmm. say one was what you might call home hi-fi uh, levels and uh, and the other would be for studio work because a lot of these amplifiers are going to be used in studios along with their DACs. that's that was really the idea the mm -hmm. speaker terminals there are uh, two two types there are the regular four millimeter binding bows that you see here which we're all used to and then we have below those the professional um, um, speak on connectors you'll see the three these three sockets here you can either have left or right or you can use the middle one for giving getting a bridge output when you put the thing in into bridge mode so those are those are line out outputs that no, basically... no 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 they're they're speak ons they're they're uh, the professional oh, oh, professional got it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Benchmark like to use them because they they say that the wiping action of the contacts keeps them clean all the time and the distortion is a little bit lower. Um, the RCAs, of course, are much much more useful for uh, demonstrations and so forth. You can go in and out easily, and uh, and uh, uh, a lot of people like to use their existing cables. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so you have the option. They both work. Uh, um, the use of XLR jacks uh, really in indicates that what we're talking about are balanced yes. audio signals. Yes. Uh, which, uh, can, can you just briefly explain the difference between balanced and unbalanced and why you would want to use balanced on this amp? Well, uh, balance is used um, primarily to get rid of uh, earthing problems in studios where you have long line long cables running and if you had the amplifier say behind your speaker at the end of the room and you had your other equipment up at the front you could use RCAs but the danger is um, that you would pick up hum and uh, which you do you can get rid of it but uh, it's much easier with balanced uh, cables to to uh, get very low noise and and make sure that no earthing currents are going to give you problems with it. right um, or or what we what we say in the US um uh, ground loops. Yes. Yeah. Um, and also uh, induced uh, electromagnetic yep. uh, interference, EMI, or radio frequency interference, RFI. Uh, unbalanced cables like like RCA tipped yep. cables will have that problem. XLR cables, balanced cables, will not have that problem. Uh, which is why they're used for microphones. XLR balanced cables are used for microphones because those cables often need to run very long distances. Yes, so, and of course they have much lower signal uh, signal levels down them too. Also that too, exactly right. 